thought I'd do a bit of an update, it's been a while since I've done one, fish are all fine temperature's starting to drop down a little bit, it's a lovely day today though sun's out, about 21 degrees, 10th of October not too bad at all, drops a bit cold at night though so uh, the covers, 35mm polycarbonate they go on at night, just slide straight on put up to each other and that keeps the pond from dropping off too quick in the in the evening and holding the temperature up quite well I'm at about 21 degrees at the moment a little bit of food for the fish The aces are starting to drop the leaves now. That one was green, it's got a furry red. Same with that one. This thing's growing like a triffid. I'm going to need to cut back some of these branches on my air layer on next spring and make some new plants. Probably get the fish out in a few weeks and have a little bit of a bowl up and a check over before they go through the winter, make sure there's no marks or ulcers or anything like that before they get shut down for the winter. A little bit of a measure up as well on some of the knee size, especially see how much growth I've had out of them this year. DIY bonsai trees not looking too bad. Hopefully, get a bit more ramification on that next year. I'm going to cut these buds back here and try and get a bit more back budding going down the branch to get them to fill out a bit. Not bad for a 70 pound garden centre tree. A little grown from seed Acer is doing too bad. It's about three years old now, that. Huh? Very slow growing. This tree got a bit crisp in the weather we had this summer when we had the 40 degrees, but that should come back fine. The branches are still quite flexible and green, so when it drops those leaves, they'll come back nice and fresh next year. made a, a couple of changes in the field house, nothing major, um, two big blues, one still full of the same catalytic carbon, the other one with bone char that I've done in Easter. Uh, what I have done is I've moved the needle valve here so that it's after the point where the water comes in. So these two cylinders now are running fully pressurised and it gets up to about two and a half bar on here when the water's coming through and up to this valve and we're trickling after it and keeping these pressurised. The thing I found by doing that is I haven't, well so far it's been about five weeks <coughs> since I changed that over and um, I haven't had to agitate these yet, it's still coming out at zero uh, parts per billion of chlorine and it's been about five weeks now, six weeks since I changed that around and I haven't had to agitate these which I was doing about every one to two weeks before but I haven't had to do it now, they're pressurised it's made a big difference for some reason um, what else have I done? Um, still got the RO running, I've added an extra flush valve so that when it first comes on 
the, the main flush valve opens up to just get rid of the water that's been sitting in there since it was turned off. Um, but also there's a flush valve on the product line because when the water's sat in there, because when it's been off on timer, um, you get a slug of high TDS water because it equalises across the membrane. And what this does, it opens this flush valve up so that the water doesn't go through and into the pond. It goes through that flush valve because I've got a non-return on this line that provides enough back pressure so that when this valve opens, the water just goes straight to waste. So when you've got that slug of bad water, when you first start the RO up again for the booster pump that's on timer, it flushes it straight to waste so it doesn't go in the pond. Um, I've done anything else since the last job? Oh, um, also added this. This is run from the pipes that feed from the big blues. Guaranteed to have the drum go off when you're filming. And then it comes round here, up here and down, into there, and that's where I go to the sodium bicarbonate to keep the KA up at around about six. Um, G8 is sitting at about five in the pond, and that's probably because the G8 of the water coming in here is about 16. Um, and then I just top that up just manually. I took about two to three little capfuls of sodium bicarbonate in there every evening, and that keeps the KH stable when I'm running the RO. Uh, that's pretty much it. I've got a 3 pod 20 inch there that I'm still deciding what to do with. Uh, I've still got some chloramine cartridges that I haven't had much use in there. Uh, I might find another use for that. Other than that, it's all just ticking along, doing quite well. Air pump, the ET60 still driving that moving bed. And the air curtain outside. well coming on about 21.3 uh, I am applying some heat to the water using the electro heater But that only comes on for um, about five to six hours a day, seven hours a day um, on the economy seven and then it goes off on that time of there so it's costing me about £1.40 a day just to apply a little bit of heat. It just helps hold that temperature up overnight especially uh, when I've got the covers on to keep me above 20 degrees and the fish happy and feeding. Um, once I get to the end of October, November, I'll slightly bring that temperature down. Once it can't hold up at about 19 degrees when the temperature starts falling, then I'll let it come down about a degree every two, three days until I get to about 12 and then hold it around about 12 or below. And I'll probably go all the way through winter without even having to heat it at that level because last year it stuck, it, the lowest it got down to was 12 and that was with no heating on due to the fact that it's all insulated, the pond's insulated, it's got six, well, um, I can't think how wide it's got two drum mil thick dry wooden walls with 50 mil of insulation, the ductwork of the pipe going to there's all got 50 mil of insulation and rock wall inside. This is insulated in here, all this has got 50 mil of insulation and the floor and then I've got two and a half inch thick solid wooden walls. So it holds the temperature up quite well. Oh, that was the other thing I also added. I added an extra socket. And what I have down here is an 80 watt tube heater. So this just runs 24 seven. It's got a little thermostat on this end here. You can turn it up or down to set it to what you want. 
even right down to as low as you know just double frost at like eight degrees centigrade you can set that i've got it set for about 16 17 degrees um with that running for a whole month non-stop on my tariff for 21 pence off peak and 34 pence peak still works out to about somewhere between 10 and 14 pounds a month and it just keeps the the condensation off the walls and keeps the cabin up to a nice warm temperature currently at 19 degrees and the coldest it's got to at night is 16 degrees so it just provides a little bit of background heat for the filter house and keeps everything nice and dry so the walls aren't dripping the condensation I think that's about it. Everything else seems to be ticking along okay. Getting ready for winter now.